one thing that I've consistently seen produce this kind of result is when people take psychedelics and specifically ayahuasca. They start to feel a very profound connection to everything and to nature and um, yeah, and often realize that everything has its own consciousness, even if it's not the same as human consciousness. Yes. <laughs> um, and I think that, that the psychedelic movement, um, the series of medicines that have come into our culture, you know, starting really back in the 50s um, with um, mescaline and LSD and then and magic mushrooms and, and you know, now ayahuasca uh, and I mean, many, many others too, they are hollowing out the story of separation from the inside. Like I know that there are people in, even in government and at the highest levels of business who have gone on ayahuasca um, ceremonies and, and they have these realizations and then they come back to, I mean, they could even be in Congress. I know that there are people in Congress who have, who have done ayahuasca and then they come back there and it's really hard for them to implement the realizations that they've had. So what ends up happening is that they feel a little less at home in those places and they become less enthusiastic participants in maintaining the status quo. So it's a, it's a very gradual hollowing out process. Like, I mean, even if, Donald Trump took ayahuasca and had an experience of oneness with nature and saw the living heart of nature and so on and so forth. What would he do with that? He still has to please voters. Yeah. I mean, and, and what about his cabinet, you know, and what about Congress and what about the CIA and like all of these, you know, and if he says anything of this, people are going to think he's crazy. And so he's like, well, I'll keep this knowledge secret and I'll do what I can. And it, aren't we all kind of in that same situation in one way or another? It's not just people who have taken psychedelics. Um, I think everybody on some level has carries a buried secret. The secret being the world doesn't have to be this way. Yeah, it's like we're all engaged in this very elaborate pretense and we all kind of know that it's a it's a game. It's not we're just playing it. We're characters, but that's not who we are. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, for some people, a very deeply buried knowledge and, and a lonely knowledge. And that's why it's so gratifying when you hear something or read something that, that speaks what you've been whispering to yourself for a long time. And one, one of it you know, could be the world is alive. And especially then when you have an experience, like an ayahuasca experience, that confirms your secret knowledge. Wow. It feels like you've been welcomed back home. And maybe you didn't even realize how lonely you were until that knowledge was reawakened and brought into consciousness. And now I know why I feel so alienated. Now I know why I've been in silent protest against my life fighting myself the whole time. <laughs> yeah, definitely had that experience and assisted by ayahuasca. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And that's how deep the change has to go. The change has to go that deep. That's what the environmental crisis is posing us with. It's not going to be solved by, you know, replacing coal plants with wind, wind, wind turbines and uh, petroleum with biofuels. Like that is not a deep enough revolution. And I'm not saying that those things are bad necessarily, although I'm actually not too big a fan of wind turbines, but, um, or especially gigantic biofuels plantations. Um, but it's, what I'm saying is that it's so much more than that. And, and it's not a matter of sustainability in terms of how do we sustain what we already have? That would be comfortable, you know, to just switch fuels and keep everything going. And then we have to ask, is this what we want? Like, if we could keep it going, is this really what we want? Especially if it's coming at, like, what if, what if we could um, install enormous 
loud carbon sucking machines all over the place and keep atmospheric CO2 below 400 parts per million and then continue strip mining the Amazon and clear cutting Sumatra and Borneo and doing all the other things that we're doing. And we have a future where there are no more whales, where there are no more elephants, where there are no more songbirds, where there are where all the earthworms are dead and all the food is grown in hydroponic factories, like, and, and the atmosphere is toxic, but we live in, live in bubble cities, et cetera, et cetera. Like, what if we could actually achieve that? Do we want to achieve that? Well, we're moving step by step toward that as a species. Every decade, more and more death on earth. What's gonna change? What has to change for us to set off in a different direction?